Hi guys, everyone. Dr. Amin from Aurora Medical Education. Really quick video. It's a crazy day, by the way. It's the first time it stopped raining about 17 hours from what it seems like. But I hope you're good. Really quick question that I get asked a lot at our day courses, whether it's CSA or PLAB2 or uh, GP Stage 3, I get asked this question a lot. Dr. Amin, should I be using medical jargon in my role play scenarios or should I avoid medical jargon? I think this is a really, really over talked about um, topic. I don't think there's a specific right or wrong answer. I'll talk about a few things related to it in a second. But um, often I see the debate going too long, people worrying about it too much. And therefore, you end up not focusing on the things that you should be focusing on in your consultation. Now, whenever you get advice that differs so much, some people say you should, some people say you should. And whenever you get that kind of advice, it generally means that there is no right or wrong answer. The reason that one person tells you to do this and someone else tells you to do this, it means there's just no right answer. They're giving opinions, what I think would be right. Now, I'm not particularly fussed whether someone uses medical jargon or not, but there are a couple of things to bear in mind. Number one, if you do use medical jargon, just make sure you follow that term up by checking if someone wants to know a bit more about it. Say, for example, you're talking about an endoscopy. Uh, Mrs. X, um, given your symptoms, um, one of the common things that we think about doing is using is doing a test called an endoscopy. Um, is that a term you've come across? Is that something that you've heard of before? So what I don't want to do is just say, um, we're going to do an endoscopy. Is that OK? And leave it at that because they'll probably come back and say, well, what's an endoscopy? Nothing wrong in that, but it kind of breaks the disruption. So you almost want to go in and just check whenever you use medical jargon. I don't know, use the word arteries or the word abdomen or the word MRI scan or the word endoscopy, whatever it is. Just make sure you follow through with the second line. Is that someone you've heard of? Do you want to explain that in a bit more detail? That's if you choose to use medical jargon. That's the first thing. The second thing, if you don't choose to use medical jargon, and remember, you are either a person who naturally does or a person who naturally doesn't. Like, you should not be trying to change yourself for exams like this. But if you don't naturally go in and use terminology straight away, then all I would make sure I'd, is that I not do is go and just be over fluffy. Just, you know, be too, too much non-jargon. So actually, the person doesn't even understand what you're trying to explain to them. So say we talk about, I don't know, the endoscopy again, rather than using the endoscopy, people want to talk about other things. So people start talking about, um, we're going to put a, a, a tube um, into your mouth and then um, it's like a pipe and in the pipe there's a little camera and it's going to go all the way down and we're going to get to your, um, can't say the word stomach, it's too medical jargon, it's going to go into your tummy, like it just gets way too, um, I mean you are a doctor and you're having a conversation with a patient um, in a role play scenario, you're going to have to use some kind of jargon. So if you, but if you don't, please don't go too much the other way so that the person in front of you doesn't really understand what you're talking about and thinking, why are they talking to me in such a, um, an odd language? So number one, if you do use medical jargon, always follow through, make sure that the person understands what you mean and find out if they want more information. If you don't use medical jargon, make sure you don't go too far the other way and end up just spending three minutes trying to explain one of the most simple concepts um, that might be out there. And the third thing is don't try and judge um, a person in a role play to think, should I use jargon or not? Is this the type of person that I can use jargon with or not? Because you know, if you're doing that, number one, you're probably going to get it wrong. You can't assume what people know and what they don't know just because of the way they're interacting with you. And secondly, um, if you start trying to do those assumptions, you're thinking about the wrong things. You, you, you're thinking about should I say this word or not? Whereas actually you should be focusing on what the person is saying um, and picking up on cues and dealing with them as a, as a human being. So when you start to think of all these additional things, then it just gets in the way of your normal conversation, which can damage rapport and interpersonal skills, etc. So three king things when it comes to medical jargon. I, like, once again, I don't mind whether you use medical jargon or not. That's a very, very personal thing. That's how you consult. And But if you're going to use it, make sure you follow it through. Is that something you've heard of? Can I explain that a bit more? Um, you know, is you know, do you want me to just explain that a little bit? It's just make sure that you don't jump from a medical term straight into the next line, and then you have to be brought back. Doctor, what's what do you mean by a an MRI scan? What is an ultrasound scan? What do you mean by endoscopy? What is um, a gallbladder, a gallstone? You know, so so always check. Secondly, if you don't use medical jargon, then make sure you don't go too far the other way and just go as if you're speaking another language completely. Just just don't use the term. Be a little bit more softer about it, but don't go too far and try and too, too fluff it up. And number three, don't try and make an assumption based on the person in front of you um, as to whether you think you should use medical jargon or not. It may happen as a gut instinct. A lot of things happen by gut instinct. That's fine. But don't try and actively think, is this a person that I should or is this a person that I shouldn't? Because you're going to probably get it wrong um, in some instances. How does this make sense? So medical jargon, please, 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 please don't worry too much about it. Don't let it stress you out too much. Um, the amount of conversations that I 
that I hear people having, the amount of questions that I get about it, the amount of worry that people have about you know these things, are just, it's just too much. Be natural, be yourself. You've spoken to patients for years and years and years. You know when and when not to. Your gut feeling will tell you that. If you do, be careful not to use it and move on. If you don't, don't go too fluffy and please don't make assumptions or try and work out in a case, is this someone I should or should not do this to? Hope this helps much more like this in terms of communication skills teaching across all of our social media networks. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe so you get these videos coming to you um, as they release. If you're on our Facebook page, please do like the page so you see videos a lot more. If you're on Instagram, please do follow. If you're on Twitter, please do follow. We love teaching you day in, day out about communication skills, about clinical stuff and about motivation for medical exams. Have a look at the website, auroramedicaleducation.co.uk for online courses, audio courses, face-to-face -face courses and loads more like this. You guys know the hashtag, Canvas will pass, hashtag I went with Aurora. Have a beautiful day, even though it's pouring down in rain.